toxoplasmosis, apparently from the best that I've been able to understand, the only true uh, place where it initially comes is in cats. And it's in a sense, it leads to one of the unfortunate things that we keep hearing about it that I think misleads people. The only place where you'll find it in the feces is in cats, cat feces. But toxoplasmosis can infect a lot of other animals. So it can be in sheep, it can be in goats, it can be in cattle, it can be in pigs. And one of the problems in the life cycle of the Toxoplasma gondii, they have three different states it can end up in. One of them is they'll go into a cyst state. So at least by my understanding, most of the time when either a person or an animal's had it, after the disease is gone, there are cysts in its tissues that remain and would be there throughout the rest of their lives, typically. But the body keeps it at bay. But what that means, okay, a person can, and usually when they talk about trying to avoid it, most of the time they say, well, a pregnant mother shouldn't go and change the, the uh, cat's litter box which for a lot of people, I suppose, may be one of their biggest exposures. But I also saw a report that indicated, this is one I think that was in Canada, they went through and 50% of the people who got it, got it from raw or undercooked meats. It can be in pork, it can be in uh, especially pork or mutton, but also in beef and so forth. So if they're handling it when it's raw in the process of preparing it and somehow it gets to their mouth, or if they don't cook it to where there's no redness or blood left, then it's a possibility that these cysts could still be there. And that's where a lot of people can pick it up. They can get it from raw goat's milk. They can get it uh, from deer can have it. So when they're, uh, a mother is gardening, they say, well, make sure you wear rubber gloves because they can get it from the soil. So there's a whole variety of ways. Basically for us to get it, it has to be ingested. Uh, and then the cyst activates and gives the person the infection. Um, the only other way is either by blood transfusion, which normally they would prevent, as well as organ donation, or um, congenitally from the mother, if she happens either shortly before the pregnancy or during the pregnancy. When they do their most basic uh, DNA tests, they'll take the blood and they've got two results. One result says, okay, they have had it, but it's more than six months ago. So they've had it sometime in the past. And that's normally not a problem. The other one will tell them, okay, they've had it, and they either have it now or within the last six months. It's two different results. I can't remember. One was a... They've got symbols for it, for the two. And then if they've had it, they think it's current, they can't tell for sure what this, till they send the sample into a special toxoplasmosis where they go through a more rigorous set of tests. So um, now like where we were, we didn't have any litter boxes. Uh, we we're living out on a farm in a sense, and there was goats, there was dogs, uh, I don't know, remember she was doing stuff in the garden. I don't remember. We'd, we didn't really know we had it. There was a time during that when some of our kids got chicken pox and she got what was de ex described as glandular fever where with some swelling and so forth. Was that the toxoplasmosis? We're not really sure. Um, the real we had never even heard of it. Apparently it's 
becoming more closely watched. The first time they ever identified it was only, I think, about 1947, 1948. Um, but when I look at the things in the, in the U.S., in Canada, apparently they say about 23 to 25 percent of the people. Worldwide, they say about 50 percent of the people. And then uh, in some areas, they say it can be up to 95 percent. So it, a lot of it depends on lifestyle and exposure, either directly to the cat feces or to one of the other uh, ways in which you can get it. But it was very instructive, I felt, that raw or undercooked meat could be the, pat the way that it comes. The only time it's really a problem is if someone is su significantly immunosuppressed some way or congenitally. And then it depends on when during the pregnancy it occurs. How someone would monitor it and, you know, they could take all the precautions, which could be very <laughs> difficult if you don't dare prepare any meat and you don't dare, uh, and, and, and how do you make sure that it's cooked well enough and you don't touch a cat? Now, you can pet a cat. They said that's not a problem. It's the feces that's a problem. Um, and it could be if, if you happen to be exposed to water where some of this can get into it, that also can be a problem. Um, so that would be the only thing they could say is if they knew, and they don't typically screen for this, if they knew that a mother had not had toxoplasmosis and she wanted to make sure she didn't get it, then she would be wise to go and look up on the internet and not just one or two places because some of them are woefully incomplete uh, and learn what she would need to avoid. Um, if she's already had it, she doesn't have to worry about it because it's just not something you'd normally ever have a problem with again. And again, it depends on where in the pregnancy it gets the, and it was interesting to me that um, my original uh, understanding was typically in the first trimester, it might end up in a, a uh, miscarriage. In the second trimester is when it really came up with the worst. In the th third trimester, usually they're okay, but other stuff I've, found since then indicates that you do have an increasing probability of transfer as it progresses through the uh, pregnancy where it can be up to 70 to 90 percent in the third trimester. And where many of them will be born and they won't have any symptoms and they may not show up till they're in their first, second, or third decade of life. And they might end up with eye problems or they might end up with some of these other things arising that reflect back to the toxoplasmosis. Um, so that's probably the biggest. And the other is if you end up with a child that has it, it's not unworkable. Again, like I said, our daughter is just shy of 40 years old. And yes, there's certain things she'll always be with us. But it's all workable. It's worth hanging on to. She has a lot of love, a lot of joy. She has all those feelings inside, even if she can't always express them, that we do. They just can't always get out as well. But they're there. And I would encourage anyone to just love them and appreciate them for who and what they are.